Deanna, congratulations on a victory. Oh, thank you. Anytime you get your hand raised against a really tough veteran uh, is a good thing. Grade your performance tonight. Um, I'm really happy right now. <laughs> this fight has been great. You know, coming off that last win, the one I had in San Jose, that fight felt great. You know, it was my hometown. It had a lot of sentimental value. And so I'm like, I need to keep going with that momentum because my goal is not just to win a fight. My goal is to win the belt. Like I'm, I'm here to be a competitor. I'm here to make my way to the top. So I got like dry mouth. So my mouth is like crumbling in on itself. So excuse me. <laughs> but it, yeah. oh, hey, I like that. Um, but it felt good to get in there and to get a win. And, you know, I've, I've told a few people, like, after my last fight, I had a really big health scare that put me in the hospital for nine days. Wow. And asked my coach, like, there was a point where I possibly would not even fight again. Like, there was Jeez. a part where I almost lost my right foot. And just my whole thought that I was in there was, like, I was coming off such a big win. I was coming off such a big win. And the sport and the fighting means so much to me and my only thought was like I have to get back in there and do it and like I had some nurses that were like oh well you used to be a fighter and I'm like no bitch I'm a fighter and I'm gonna get back in there so you can tell me you can send me home with this walker I'm gonna learn how to walk again and I'm gonna be fine and I was able to get in there and just being here being on weight made it so all you people that call me fat I will be in a week but right now I'm not <laughs> but it was just amazing to be able to get the opportunity to come back with Bellator, have everything just go so well. And, you know, every fight camp has its issues and stuff, but just to be able to come here and get that win and have a performance where I showed me in the cage. You know, I had fun. I got to show, you know, some stand up, and Justine's a really tough competitor. That's what I was telling her afterwards, you know, just to be able to fight against such tough people. That, that's what I want. I don't want to go in there and just be like, oh, I know I'm going to beat them. I want somebody who scares me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ask my corners in the back. I'm like, am I ready for this fight? And they're like, Deanna, you've had like 20 pro fights. Can you stop asking that? And I'm like, probably not, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to keep asking it. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to keep talking unless you ask something okay, else. Okay, okay, I'll so jump in. I'll jump in. <laughs> you should probably right, ask something right, else right, if you yeah, want to. All right, I'll jump in. Uh, so, I noticed, you know, you had some pretty even exchanges on the feet, but it was your wrestling that really stood out. I know in her last fight, it was the same thing. She lost because of wrestling. Is that Was that kind of your game plan that you saw in the past that you could beat her just by wrestling? Honestly, I'm just kind of like a bull in a china shop, and my coach calls me Queen Kong because I like picking people up, but I like slamming them, and I just, wrestling, wrestling is like my bread and butter. I wrestled in high school. That's like my favorite thing. I love picking people up. I do. <laughs> in fact, even when I'm sparring with like big people, my coach always gets mad at me because I'll find like a giant guy. I'm like, you want to go this round? And I'll pick him up and put him on my shoulder, and he's like, Deanna, you can't pick up 200-pound men. I'm like... I think I just did, so I don't know what you're saying. I can't, but again, true story. He hates me. <laughs> My last question, you said you want to fight for the title. Yep. You want to win the title. You want to fight people that scare you. Yep. So you just beat two fighters in a row that are big names in Bellator. So call your shot. You, <laughs> you, you, I mean, you got the, you're on a roll. What do you want next? Um, Honestly, so they have me ranked at number seven, which is kind of funny because the last girl I fought before Justine is ranked number five. So I'm like, I feel like y'all messed that up. So maybe y'all can correct that now. But uh, there's, you know, five, six people ahead of me. I don't have any single person that I want. I want to fight, honestly, anyone whose number is higher than mine so I can get to the top, um, whoever it is put them in front of me. I don't care who it is. I want that belt. And that's what I'm here for. I've worked my whole career to get to that point and I'm not quitting until I get it. So if you all don't want like a 50 year old woman coming here and beating up 20 year olds, you better get me that title fight soon. Cause I'm going to keep fighting until you do. So, <laughs> but any of them, um, like I said, I, I'm on weight. I have a great nutritionist that I've worked with. Everything's on point. I've got a great team, great training partners. I got everything, you know, I, I, I'm, Give me any, any of them, all of them, line them up. Let's have fun. I'm gonna pick them all up and put them on my shoulder and I'm gonna slam them down and I'm gonna have some fun with a smile on my face. <laughs> hey Deanna, congratulations again, great performance. Listen, you know, uh, with Bellator 266, you highlighted, you know, your father's memory being a strong driving force in helping yes. your performance, right? And you told like with this uh, training camp, you know, it's been difficult, but every training camp has its difficulties. Uh -huh. How much have, you know, Oh, obviously, since 266, you know, how much has the, your father's memory and uh, been an inspiration for you continuing your career? 
honestly, it's a driving force every day. Like I've, I've said it before, his last words to me were fight because he knew that it's something that I'm good at and he knew that I was passionate about it. And so I think about that. Ooh, I need to stop talking like this so y'all can hear me. I get really excited and I talk with my hands. It's an Argentine thing. It's fine. Um, I, um, it's, it's something I think about every day. You know, I always have him with me. You know, I go, I like to go to the beach and have kind of like reflection time, have talks with him. I was talking to my cornerman over here about it the other day. Like I, I have talks with him all the time. I carry his badge with me basically everywhere that I go. And you know, that last fight in San Jose was for, for, for him and for his legacy and his belief in me. And that's never going to change. But these fights, this fight tonight, the next one, every fight that I have to get to that belt, that's going to, those fights are for me and for my legacy. And he's always going to be a part of me. I always have his badge. And like I say, I always have a talk with him. If I can get in the cage beforehand, I do that. If not, I do it in the mat room. You know, it's, he's my person. He's not physically here in this world anymore, but he's always with me. And I, I carry that dear to me. And it's a driving force on days that are tough. I'm like, he believed in me until the very end, till the, his last words were him believing in me. And I'm going to do everything I can to live up to that. And listen, living up to that is a hard, uh, hard, you know, task, for, you know, because it it's <laughs> a lot to come through. But the main question is, you know, the women's flyweight division doesn't have a much, a lot of noise going on. So, you know, Lay Millet, McFarland, Liz Carm, which I'm pretty sure you would love to avenge the loss. How do you plan? <laughs> how would you, how do you plan? Like, I know you said, you know, anybody, but are you planning on getting someone that, like the top name, like uh, Lee Millet, McFarland, and Liz Carmouche? Um, I would love that. I think Liz is next in line for the title. And honestly, in an ideal world, she wins that title. I fight somebody. I'd love to fight Alima. She's a former champion. She's a very tough competitor. And like I said, I want to fight the best of the best. And so she's up there. And so, you know, I fight Alima. I fight somebody else. One, two more fights. And then in my ideal world, Liz wins the title. And then I fight her, get that back. Because when I fought Liz in this very arena, I, um, the fight was going my way. And I tore my hamstring straight off the bone. I had 95% torn off. I'd show you my scar, but my coach really hates it. It's like up in this area. He gets really mad at me. I'm like, you wanna see my scar? I got it right here. And then I lick it like a cat. I'm sorry, you can't really take me anywhere. Um, what was the question again? Just kidding. Um, but yeah, that happened here last time I was at the Mohegan. And so, you know, I, I want that fight back. I think it, that was during COVID times, things were crazy. I think with a solid camp and my body parts stay attached to each other, I think I see that fight going differently. And so I'd love to fight her for the title and win my title that way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Congrats, Dan, on the win. Um, so I'm curious to know, I know you said you have a nutritionist. I thought in this fight you looked the most complete that you've ever looked. What have you done in your camp overall that has brought you to this level and well, it seems like a new Deanna Bennett that's been fighting? <laughs> well, I, I have my, my coaches. I have really great coaches that I work with. I have teammates that push me. And honestly, when I got sick back in November, I actually got rheumatic fever. Um, I know I alluded to that with the, one of the other questions. I had rheumatic fever. It targeted my hand. It targeted my foot. I basically had a walker. I, 30 years ahead of schedule, I now have a walker because I got sick. And in the hospital and then coming out of it, the only thought that I had was that I, I want to fight again. Like, I have so much that I want to do, and I need to push myself every single day. You know, I, I don't want to show up and half-ass my training. I don't want to half-ass anything like the number one thing that I learned through all these experiences is that you don't know how much time you have you don't know when it's gonna be your last day to do the things that you want to do and be able to, to live out your dreams and so you have to make use of every single day every single day you have to do something that pushes you you have to do something that scares you you have to do the things that you want to do because you might not wake up one day or something might happen and you not might not, not have the availability to and so I, I kind of took this camp that way I every day I got up and I, I pushed myself the very most I did I uh, changed up a little bit of my training and I I drove to Philadelphia which is an hour and a half away three days a week just so I can get that extra push with these really tough guys at Daniel Racy school on top of working with my coaches at my main school and the jiu-jitsu school and so it's just making use of all the time I have because 
Like I said, I have goals and I'm not stopping until I reach them. I might stumble every once in a while, but I'm gonna put in every single effort to make sure that it happens for me. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for the time, Deanna. Oh, I'll thank you. Yep. I'm sorry I lifted my leg like a 